today we're very lucky to be uh, joined by Peter Hitchens. Thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure so far. <laughs> Do you feel that Britain's at risk of losing its cultural heritage? It lost its cultural heritage long ago. I, most young people have no idea of our history or our literature. Are very, very bad at speaking our language. Have, have very little consciousness of our of, of our national character or nature. Uh, the, the culture is dead. And you can ask people uh, about the English Civil War, and they don't know who's fought on on either side. They don't. They, David Cameron, our Prime Minister, has never heard, as far as I can see, of the 1689 Bill of Rights, and he doesn't know what Magna Carta means. I mean, th th this is a person who went to Eton. So imagine how it is when they went to Bog Lane Comprehensive. Do you think there's any way of getting around that? Or no, it's just no, it's over. Dead. I think one, uh, one of the things that, 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 is, that, is, that, is, that has changed my life recently has been the recognition it cannot now be rescued or saved. There is no, it has, it has gone. And how early in your life did you come to that recognition? Well, I came to that recognition really after the 2010 general election, when a lot of things came, uh, became clear to me about the, 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 the limits of intervention in politics. I noticed it all as far too late and many other people did too and I also misunderstood the nature of the, of, the, of, the, of the way in which it might be changed. I didn't realize until far too late for instance that the principal enemy of patriotic Christian conservatism in Britain was the Conservative Party uh, which it undoubtedly is because it, it, by sitting across the, the, the path as it does and by pretending to be a Conservative Party it prevents the growth of a genuinely Conservative movement. Would you say there was any defining moment for you with your religious beliefs? No. I, there are, d d d the mind isn't changed by a defining moment. It, it may be the case for Saul of Tarsus, who became St. Paul thanks to a blinding light and, and losing his sight and, uh, and recovering it and hearing a voice in his head. But for most people, uh, any kind of change of mind is a long, slow process, and you don't realize that you've it's a bit like the frontier between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic you don't realize you've crossed it until some time after you have uh, when the signs become so impossible to avoid that you realize you must be in the other place but there wasn't a moment when you thought ah I have stepped across from one into the other it didn't happen to me like that and I doubt whether it happens to most people like that you just said your politics defined or influenced your religion or your religion defined well, your politics two things are completely interconnected uh, in, in a way and all of them, all of them are about uh, the impulse towards justice. Uh, and in, the, the problem with the political impulse towards justice and the idea that one can attain some sort of earthly utopia is that it leads you to become extremely impatient with the people who disagree with you about what justice ought to be. And if you have the power to be really impatient with them, then you end up killing them, which is why, as I always say, utopia is only approached across a sea of blood and you never get there. Uh, politics in, in, is fundamentally utopian in all cases that, of course, a law-governed state with a free press and some sort of suffrage will restrain people from the worst excesses of utopianism. They can do an awful lot of damage while pursuing their earthly paradise. The religious position tells you that this is not attainable and that the first thing you need to reform in any part of life is yourself. Uh, other people are, to a huge extent, their own business. It was an amazing way in which atheists misinterpret the attitude of religious people towards uh, doing good. And, the, and the, For instance, atheists will often say, well, I don't need your great sky fairy up there to tell me how to be good. I behave very well. Anyway, I say, well, you may behave very well. I don't. Uh, I, f I, I confess once a week to my sins that I'm not making them up. I, I continue, despite a religious belief, to do many things which are wrong. It's a, it's a, it's a human failing. I don't believe that, uh, that it makes me good. Uh, or that, in fact, human beings are on their own capable of, 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 of doing pure good. But the, the reform of self is the first thing, and not actually telling other people how to behave. Though I do believe that governments should stop interfering in life and society to pressure people into behaving badly, as I believe they do. What would you like to have seen the Conservative Party in 2010 have broken up into? I would like the Conservative Party to have been broken up into pieces small enough to shove down the lavatory, so that you could flush it away and it would be then be gone. That would be the best thing to do with the Conservative Party. I don't think I wanted any part of it to survive. Would that not just pave the way for a... 
it would have opened the possibility. It wouldn't have made it, 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 would, it would have been a necessary but not a sufficient condition. What, the, what you need to break is the tribal link between conservative minded voters and the Conservative Party. What you also need to do very much is to break the other link, which is the, the belief among many socially, and morally, and culturally conservative Labour voters that they have to vote Labour, that they're the only party which will defend them as Labour. What, what I would have liked to have seen would have been a party comparable in some ways, though I don't like Yaroslav Kaczynski because he seems to me to have, have many um, illiberal impulses, but comparable to the current law and justice government in Poland which combines strong social democratic concern for the welfare state and the, uh, the rights of people at work and for the poor uh, with patriotism and cultural conservatism. Those, and, but you, you couldn't really do that unless you could seduce culturally conservative Labour voters away at the same time as you kept uh, culturally conservative conservative voters. And you, therefore to do that I think you really did need to get rid of the Conservative Party. UKIP makes a sort of attempt to do this by pursuing as it sometimes does the, lab, the, the Labour patriotic vote in the north of England. But it simply doesn't have the capacity to do it. And in fact I, I think UKIP ended up being used by the Conservative Party to take Labour votes away uh, without actually gaining any, anything for itself. Which is not, you never ever want to be in a position where you're being used by the Conservative Party. What's been your career as a journalist? What advice do you give for students who are looking to get into journalism? I can't give you any advice. When, look, I, 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 when I was at university we got full grants, maintenance grants, uh, and we walked out of university into jobs. Uh, which we could expect to lead us on to other jobs which would last our, our whole lives. There were in those days large local newspaper combines which ran serious training schemes and welcomed graduate trainees in quite large numbers. Small provincial newspaper offices had l quite large numbers of experienced older journalists at whose feet you could learn the trade. Uh, and for instance full-time librarians in extensive cuttings libraries and would hire people to come and teach his shorthand. This is, this, is, this is as distant from the current age as the Stone Age. It, none of it, as far as I know, happens anymore. I couldn't offer you the slightest advice. I, I, if I did, it would be advice you would be well advised not to take. Have you found the experience of being a journalist fulfilling? Oh, way? wonderful, yes. I, could, I, I couldn't have asked for better. I, I've managed to get practically everything that I ever hoped to get. And as I, I will tell people my original ambition was to be the captain of a destroyer. But I learned early in life that I couldn't pass the exacting Royal Navy watchkeeping standards for, um, for, for eyesight, so I couldn't do that. So I had to look for something that was at least nearly as exciting as being captain of a destroyer. And I think journalism has measured up. On occasion, it probably has been even more exciting. So yes, it's been wonderful, but it has been wonderful. I, I, would, I, I find it hard to see how anyone starting it now could possibly have as much fun as I've had. So sorry guys, I don't want to sound, don't want to sound smug, but it, it, I think it may have gone. But a lot of my life, it, it, it was it, the, the England that I saw growing up, I, I often say it was as if I'd got to the station in time to see a beautiful old steam express, dining cars full of beautifully dressed people that one would want to be on departing. And I watched it go, I wanted to be on it, I watched it go, I, knew, I know what I missed. I saw this country depart as it had been, and cease to, cease to exist as it had been, and I, I, I saw it clearly enough, and experienced enough of it, to know what I lost, and that will always be a regret. But I, I can't really offer you anything much else in the way of journalism. I may be completely wrong, it may be that the printed newspapers are due for a renaissance, that you're all going to start buying them again, and reading them, and that you're going to sick of this internet stuff, and that... Uh, and that everything that's happened over the past 20 or 30 years will go into reverse. And good if I am, I'd be glad to be wrong about many things, but I don't at the moment see any sign of it. Um, would you say within your career as a journalist, there's any particular highlight that you remember? Yes, the moment when I decided that I would uh, go and live and work in Moscow, which was preceded by a series of strokes of immense good luck, where I found myself in various parts of what I did at that time find, and still in retrospect find, utterly fascinating, the Eastern Europe, which people didn't then tend to go to. But the moment I thought 
Yes, this I have to meant uprooting my entire life. It meant taking my family and young children with me to Moscow, where I had nowhere to live and no office to work from. I had a suitcase with a fax machine in it and a large wad of of fifty pound notes. And I went to Moscow on the train, pretty much with that and a few changes of clothes. And I set up uh, the reopened Moscow bureau of a national newspaper. And it was the most tremendous adventure. It was terrifying uh, and it was immensely rewarding. And that was the moment when really uh, I, I did, I think I did what I was supposed to do. And what's come after has been based on that. And what went before, I think, was, the, though I didn't know it at the time, was the path towards it. What would you say was your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, I don't eat breakfast cereal as you describe it, that is to say um, cornflakes, but I do eat uh, Irish organic jumbo oats uncooked and I can recommend them very highly as a very good breakfast. I won't actually give you the brand name but, there is, <laughs> but it, they are terrific. Thanks for watching, and also thanks to Bonnie and Brutti for letting us film in their cafe, and to Peter Hitchens for giving us our first interview. If you thought this video was good, please like it down below and subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos, and if you want to look at our social media, that's all available in the description down below. We also run a national blog of student writers. If you want to write for us or check out some of the articles, both of those are linked in the description below.